It typically starts with a sneeze. Spring in Europe always sparks a stream of sniffly noses and itchy eyes. This season, though, scientists are warning of a phenomenon known as the pollen effect. They've linked high pollen levels with a rise in COVID. The researchers say many factors can affect infection rates, but let's take a closer look at allergies and the coronavirus. Well, that picture is enough to get me sneezing. I always yearn for spring after the long, cold German winter, but I don't look forward to all the allergies, especially considering all the headlines going round about pollen and COVID. Co-exposure to airborne pollen enhances your susceptibility to respiratory viral infections. A study shows that could also be true for SARS-CoV-2. We'll talk to one of the authors about that in a moment. First, this report. Spring is in the air. For many, that means time to enjoy the outdoors. But for people like Benedict Schmitz, spring means allergies. My throat starts tingling, and I have to be careful not to touch my eyes, otherwise they start to itch. Early blossoms can play havoc with the nose and eyes. Hazelnut and alder pollen are problematic for many. Benedict's main issue is with grass pollen, but during the pandemic, he's often asking himself whether his symptoms are to do with his allergy or possibly coronavirus instead. I think everyone who experiences such symptoms probably asks themselves the same question. You become a kind of hobby hypochondriac. When my throat starts scratching or I feel sleepy, typically after I've taken an allergy tablet, I start to worry whether this might be coronavirus instead. Time for a bit of research. Indeed, the symptoms of many allergies are pretty similar to those of COVID-19. Sore throat, coughing, sneezing, tiredness. Benedict books an appointment with an allergy specialist to ask which symptoms point to a coronavirus infection. Relatively common is a loss of smell. That's something you really experience with allergies, and certainly not to the extent that you completely lose your sense of smell. So that would be a clear indicator that you may have a coronavirus infection. Itchy eyes would suggest it's not coronavirus, whereas a fever would. Exhaustion, a dry cough that really persists, these would suggest something like a COVID-19 infection. But experienced allergy sufferers know at what time of the year they tend to get symptoms. Benedict Schmitz is now confident he doesn't need to be tested for coronavirus. But what about his allergy symptoms? Because of the pandemic, the doctor recommends medicating early so that sneezing is kept to a minimum. Cortisone nose sprays, for example, can help with that. But isn't cortisone harmful? Cortisone shouldn't be injected or taken in a tablet form to treat allergies, except in an absolute emergency, because then it can really have side effects. But the thing about cortisone sprays is that the cortisone in them only has an effect in the nasal area. There are no adverse effects on the rest of the body. A spring free of sneezes and itchy eyes. And, others can rest assured, it's an allergy and not COVID. Claudia Treidel-Hoffmann is director of the Institute of Environmental Medicine in Munich and was involved in a study into exactly this topic. What did you find exactly? What do pollen allergies have in common with COVID? Ben, in this study, we bring a new and previously unnoticed aspect into the equation of pandemic fueling. It's not just about aerosols that are key drivers of viral pandemic, but it's rather the complexity of the aerosols. So we show in a large study that increased SARS-CoV-2 infections are observed when airborne pollen are high. And this is the result of a large study with 130 pollen monitoring stations in 31 countries over five continents. And really the finding is in the last spring, there was a coincidence and a correlation of SARS-CoV-2 infection rates rising and air pollen, pollen concentrations. And of note, the lowest infection rates were observed at sites with low pollen concentration during the study period. OK, so why do infection rates rise when there's a lot of pollen in the air? 
So the molecular finding behind this is that pollen weaken the antiviral defense of mucosal surfaces like nose and upper airway. You can imagine that it's like a perforated shield that pollen induce. So normally we have a shield against viruses and, and pollen are are uh, um, yeah, making this leaky. And this is why during pollen season, we are more susceptible for well, viral infection. Spring is already here and my eyes have been itching like crazy. Should, should I be worried? I have a pollen allergy, obviously. This is very important to know. So it's not only about pollen allergy, it's beyond pollen allergy. So this is an unspecific effect. This has nothing to do with allergies. Mm -hmm. This is something we are observing in every individual. There's been criticism of this study, despite it being uh, so broad and global. How great a risk is pollen for people with allergies or without allergies? So the criticism that has been there is that people are, are not citing that we, we observed a, a, a common effect of several environmental factors, pollen, humidity, and temperature, and all together are important for a variability of infection rates. And important is the following. It's about the personal risks that cannot be um, concluded from the study. So I cannot say that Mr. Müller has this and that probability to get an infection due to pollen. So this is something we have now to investigate in further studies. We know that pollen are impacting on the mucosal immunity, and this is clear, but concerning the personal risks, there's nothing to, to say from this study. Mm -hmm. what, what would you say then are the actual consequences of your study? So inclusion and towards the one health approach, um, the variable missing from the pandemic equation is to, to really look for the whole environment impacting on infection rates. And this is why we uh, suggest that we should really bring these environmental factors in modulation, in also prediction of what is happening in the future. And we need really dedicated large scale, uh, scale biomonitoring uh, bio studies on characterized patients in order to understand the environmental impact on this pandemic. Well, I hope you get that support because I'm going to be sneezing and getting itchy eyes for quite some time. Claudia Treidel Hoffmann, Director of the Institute of Environmental Medicine in Munich. Thank you very much for joining us today. I thank you. Bye. For today's viewer question on the coronavirus, it's over to our science correspondent, Derek Williams. I have asthma. Can I get a COVID-19 vaccine? The Centers for Disease Control still considers asthma as one of the conditions that might increase the risk of severe outcomes if you come down with COVID-19. But data continues to accumulate that at least for people who have moderate forms of the disease, um, asthma doesn't pose as big of a risk factor as other chronic conditions like, for example, diabetes. Um, when you start looking into this topic, the recommendation you read over and over again is that no matter what happens, if you have asthma, it's important to keep it under control by following your action plan, since an asthma attack that forces you to go to an emergency room um, puts you at more danger of exposure to SARS-CoV-2. The answer to the question of whether you should get a COVID-19 vaccine is, is a resounding Yes, uh, national asthma associations recommend people who have the autoimmune condition get shots as soon as they have the opportunity. Uh, in trials, COVID vaccines were given to subjects of, of many different ages, among them people with chronic conditions uh, like asthma. And, and the hundreds of millions of shots given worldwide since have not given rise to any specific uh, vaccine-related cause for alarm for, for people who live with it. I, I did find a recommendation from the British Lung Foundation saying that although the vaccine is not known to interact with medications, uh, if you take monoclonal antibodies for your asthma, then, then you should talk to your doctor. 
about how to time when you get your vaccine. So, so take that into consideration. Um, but in general, all of the experts that I read are saying that you should get the shot as soon as you can. Now to some of the other coronavirus-related stories making news. AstraZeneca says its coronavirus vaccine is strongly effective following its disputed U.S. study. After recalculating the data from that study, instead of 79% efficacy, the pharma firm concluded that the vaccine is 76% effective in preventing symptomatic COVID. Nonetheless, Danish authorities have extended their suspension of the vaccine pending further studies in correlation with blood clots. The U.S. Senate has confirmed Rachel Levine as the first transgender person to hold a senior government position in the United States. The president's pick as assistant health secretary, Levine led Pennsylvania's response to the coronavirus outbreak. She will oversee health and human services. The Tokyo Olympics torch relay is underway under strict conditions to stop the spread of the coronavirus. Spectators were barred from the departure ceremony because of ongoing fears about the virus, which forced the 2020 Games to be postponed last year. The torch is on a 121-day relay across Japan before lighting the Olympic cauldron on July 23rd. And a new record for Banksy. The piece Game Changer sold for 19.4 million euros at Christie's in London, with the proceeds going to Britain's National Health Service. It pays tribute to frontline health workers in the pandemic, praising nurses as the real superheroes. The elusive street artist had given the piece to University Hospital in Southampton with a note saying, thanks for all you're doing.